Hello, we are now coming at you live from Redfish Rocks. I'm Tara Ramsey, I'm the coordinator for the Redfish Rocks community team, and we are out here with some special guests today. Um, for your pleasure. State representative David Brock Smith. Awesome. Charlie Plyvin, Oregon Policy Manager for Surfrider Foundation. Bree Goodwin, Oregon Field Manager for Surfrider Foundation. Awesome. And you guys all were kind of here at the very beginning um, of Redfish Rocks and the Oregon Marine Reserve program in general. So we'd love to hear a little bit of your perspectives on the formation um, of this program and specifically in relation to Redfish Rocks because that's where we are. Yeah, so uh, the Redfish Rocks Marine Reserve proposal was really unique because the fishing community was heavily involved in the proposal and um, pretty supportive of the proposal. They put a lot of thought into where they wanted the marine reserve and marine protected area to be sited. And there was a lot of uh, respect given to areas that were just too important for our fishing community to close. Um, so that what, that's what makes made this proposal super unique. And then jumping forward a few years after that proposal went in and was successful, um, I was the first coordinator for the Redfish Rocks community team. And so the community then came together um, to form a group that would support the implementation of the marine reserve and marine protected area. So that was things like looking at uh, economic development opportunities, like starting a tour business like the Black Pearl we're on right now. With South Coast Tours. Um, it was doing super fun outreach events like photo contests and having um, underwater photo presentations from scuba divers, but it was just really neat to see the community come together and um, really support this special area and, you know, 10 plus years later, still going. Awesome. Thanks, Rhea. It was like really good. It's sort of sort of a trip down memory lane, kind of thinking about how this was all formed and what makes this place special. And For me, I came a couple years before the Marine Reserve was proposed, and actually what preceded the Marine Reserve proposal here was something that, that was voluntary by the community, and they designated a stewardship area. Um, and that was the, the fishing community and, and the people from the land here and the, the, the entire community really recognizing what was valuable and important to them and figuring out how are we going to protect and steward that future generations. So it was a completely voluntary act of this community. Uh, it incorporated both the land and the ocean. Um, it incorporated what is now a marine reserve and became a marine reserve proposal. But also it incorporated their fishing grounds and uh, the, the watersheds that uh, the, the salmon and the other animals that, uh, that move in, inland uh, all depend on. So they, they really recognize that land sea connection and that's what really made this place special for me. And like Bree said earlier, it's like it's just so cool to be on this boat right now, 10 years later, it's like full circle um, being on a, a, an eco tour of the Marine Reserve right now. So uh, Dave has a lot more to share as a, as a, as a leader uh, through many different levels. Guys, um, there's a massive rope jelly we're going right over. Jelly. Big rib yeah, We're sorry. We're seeing lots of life out here. Yeah. Right now, it's very <laughs> exciting. Awesome. Yeah, we're trying to channel some orcas out here. Yes, everyone, so everyone, everyone watching on live, send us your orca energy. Orca right. energy. <laughs> well, and there were some orcas down in the Chetco Harbor um, just earlier last week. Right? So as uh, Bree and, and Charlie were talking about, so I'm the state representative David Brock Smith, and I, uh, back then... You know, over 10 years ago, I was the city council president and uh, the chamber of commerce president back then. And so we did move forward that stewardship area um, just for all the reasons that Charlie talked about. Because we, our fishing fleet is, you know, they want the sustainable fishery here. Uh, and as they both talked about as well, moving forward, I was a charter member, if you will, of the Redfish Rocks community team that that came together and, and you know helped facilitate those conversations um, with all of the stakeholders, the business community, the fishing community, and uh, advocates on both sides. And really, it was a model for um, for the rest of the marine reserves uh, uh, and the stakeholder process up and down the coast. Um, you know, we have just an amazing 
um, amazing ecology here. We, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, the marine reserve today and what it has done for, for um, you know, Southwest Oregon and Port Orford in particular is this you know, amazing ink fish incubator, um, right? But then you have an opportunity for for dive uh, uh, diving in the marine reserve. Of course, no take, and and then working with Tom Calvin, he's had the fish tracker program that was just incredible and and being able to get that data not just data from fish in the in the reserve of course but then fish that were traveling through the reserve such as great white sharks and sturgeons and and other uh, and other species um and then as we you know 10 years later now we're you know in the in the process of talking about offshore wind off of uh, brookings and off of coos bay and and the challenges and the, and the opportunities that that can bring us uh, here on the south coast of Oregon. So it's just fantastic to be out here again. It's been a number of years since I've been on the ocean and uh, it's absolutely a beautiful day. I just love looking over at the Emerald Coast, I want to call it right now, mm. because it's just the, the colors, the greens are just so amazing. magical. And uh, but just what a special place. And it was community made, community formed and, and just uh, Charlie was there from the beginning as well, and, and uh, it's just it's great it's great to see what can happen when people come together and do it the Oregon way. The collaboration in this community with the, the science uh, uh, researchers and the managers at Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has really been profound uh, over the past ten years. Uh, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife was charged with doing a lot of science and monitoring and research here. Um, a lot that they've never done before. They've never done that kind of monitoring in the near shore. They've never really tried to figure out where fish are at and understand their patterns of movement. So guess who they turned to? The, the local fishermen. Uh, and they collaborated on new research projects. New, you know, lots of ways to um, study and do uh, long lining and hook and line surveys for fish that uh, researchers didn't really understand before. And this community and, and fishermen uh, helped kind of figure those things out. Um, so it's really cool to see sort of science and fishermen um, working together in, in that sense. Uh, and a lot of, like, like uh, David Brocksman said here, a lot of uh, incubation happening at this marine reserve, learning for other marine reserves, how we research, and, and honestly just how we work with people. Well, and the research connection, so David mentioned great white sharks, which are my favorite all-time animal. And uh, Tom Calvinis, when he was doing that fish tracker program, he was picking up pings of great white sharks coming from Isla Guadalupe down in Mexico. And I actually had an opportunity to go dive with uh, the sharks down in Mexico. And so I was able to bring videos of the sharks swimming through Oregon um, and show everyone on the shark diving boat where those sharks were. I don't know if we saw those actual ones, um, but then that led to the dive master on that boat is on Shark Week every year, and so then eventually Tom was on Shark Week because I was like, hey, look at this cool research where I live. Um, so there's like international connections that I don't think any of us ever thought uh, would happen because of the research in the marine reserve. So so many cool different story threads uh, coming out of the reserve. I saw a fish. On the surface over here. Yeah. <laughs> They're feeding on those crab larvae. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, and one of the other great things is, you know, as I'm wearing the Port Oakford uh, Sustainable Seafood Hat, right? You have you have the uh, a business that is that has been driven out of of uh, you know the sustainable fishery that we all love here in Port Orford and, and being able to bring that fresh protein, the, some of the cleanest protein on the planet, right? I mean, we, we, we're we in, in waters that don't, uh, because of the stewardship area and, and the uh, focus on on the uh, the land to sea connection, we're in an area that, that is you know, free of mercury, free, free of, of all of the pesticides, insecticides, you know, uh, herbicides. and. Um, an area that has uh, just some of the cleanest fish in the world. And so to be able to, to market that and get that out there, people want that, especially in today's society. And uh, you know, we've built businesses out of this, I mean, including, as was mentioned earlier, uh, the Black Pearl that we're on right now and, and uh, South Coast Tours. Yeah, I think that that really speaks to like healthy ecosystems. They support sustainable fisheries, but they also support 
recreation and, and businesses, and there's a reason why people live here. The quality of life is really, really high because of the ecosystems and the surroundings that we have. I mean, you know, representative here was looking back at the land, you know, admiring that emerald green, you know, landscape. We're not looking at condominiums, right? We're not, we're not looking at industrial stormwater outfalls right here. We're looking at a truly uh, remarkable land-sea connection right here, and that's the quality of life that, that we really are aiming to protect. I I think there's also, over the years, the community team has done a lot of really great youth outreach, and yeah. which is super fun talking to the kids. They are so interested in what's under the water. The water festival. Yeah, we had the we used to have a water festival. We'd have um, like oh whoa, look at the pelicans. pelicans. See, there's so much cool stuff. Out so here. much. You really never know what you're gonna get. The last time we were out here shooting a live video, we actually had a gray whale come and visit us so you really don't know what you're gonna find oh yeah. they're so beautiful yes. and the pelicans dave you're saying the pelicans migrate kind of on the same path as the gray whales yeah cool yeah, the same. Awesome. all right sorry you never know what's oh, no, gonna interrupt you out here that's what happened that's what it's like when you're talking to youth about the marine reserve and they're like have you seen this have you seen this the research has gotten this on video um i mean there's a, a thresher shark that some researchers they were in a kayak and sent it, a camera down and they didn't know it was there until they were watching the video later so you never know what you're going to see down there but you know back when i was the coordinator we we're, were just teaching everyone about this special place and um on earth day this year so about a month ago i led a beach cleanup with uh fourth graders from driftwood and we were down at battle rock beach and i pointed out here to redfish rocks and i said does anyone know what that is and a kid goes yeah that's redfish rocks marine reserve and i was like what that's awesome how do you know that um, and turns out his dad's a fisherman and has talked to him about the marine reserve. And so it's super cool to be like from the beginning when everyone's kind of discovering with us with the research. And now fourth graders know that the marine reserve is here, which is super cool. That was like one of my favorite parts of that beach cleanup last month. Awesome. We just did some outreach. Oh, sorry. Uh, we just did some outreach with also fourth graders and we were like, this is Redfish Rocks Marine Reserve. It's been here for 10 years. They're like, that's as old as me, which was kind of like, whoa. Like <laughs> this place started when these kids were babies. Yeah. <laughs> so they've known it their whole lives, which is awesome. Yeah. One of the cool things for me though, uh, is the, the idea that, you know, being here from the beginning, you know, never, never, you know, contemplating that I would be the state representative, right? 10 years, 12 years later. Um, and then now advocating for the funding through uh, the, the various agencies to make sure that, the, that, that they have the science, uh, the resources for their data collection and, and uh, science uh, information so that they can bring it back to the legislature and give the reports that are necessary for us to uh, move forward with other opportunities in the future. And um, it's kind of weird to think back, uh, you know, back then because I just, like, yeah, we could do this, stakeholders together. And I just wish that um, I, it wasn't easy, um, <laughs> but nothing good's easy. <laughs> it, it was it was done in a way that really had everyone's um, opinions and listening in mind and moving forward and having their input. And I wish more things, more decisions were made in that manner on other. Uh, issues. Came, came together with a common goal. Everybody looked at this marine reserve and protecting this environment and this place for the same reasons. Or maybe for different reasons, but for, at the end of the day, they wanted to protect it. And, and they, it meant something to all of them. And, and I think that having that common goal and starting in the same place is, is so important to have a starting place for discussions. We're seeing that right now with the wind, for example. We didn't start in the same place on that discussion, and it's, it's, it's fractured a lot of communities. And so this is just a great example of how you can start a discussion in the same place um, that seemingly sometimes people are on the opposite sides of and realize, oh, actually, we have a lot of common ground here, and there may be a path forward. And honestly, that's what the stewardship area was that preceded the in a lot of ways. So, sorry. 
Yeah, no, and David had mentioned before when we created the community team that there were some people from uh, different perspectives, some that um, still weren't quite as supportive, that were actually on the community team. And so the, the community team, it was, it was the community working with agencies, working with researchers, and um, there were some rough patches um, and interesting conversations, conversations that needed to happen, but I think ultimately because we were working on the, a shared goal you know we got to a place where people were like oh okay yeah like I get it and then you know this can bring some good and so I think if there hadn't been a community team then some some people would have been left behind and there wouldn't there wouldn't have been uh, as much I think cool things like the research and outreach that have come out of the marine Awesome. Yeah. We're, we're super grateful for all the work that you guys have put in and being here to enjoy the fruits of that labor is uh, pretty special. There's a whole colony of, I don't know, are those common murs? Might be hard to see on the live, but there is probably a hundred plus common murs on top of and that a rock. Pelican over on oh, the right. And a gorgeous pelican over there. Well, well, Speaking of good work, uh, today is your last day. Today uh, is my last day. Yeah, and I want to acknowledge you and all the work that you do. And the Redfish Rocks community team, really the, the group that's held it all together and has been the glue for this community. Um, groups like Surfrider and others have you know, kind of come and gone in, these, in this, and we, we always have a hand in it, but really it's the, the local people um, that hold the community together. And... Um, uh, you know, representative here is now in Salem a good bit and, and being called all over the state and um, we're all over the place but the, the, the community team keeping it together like, yeah. so valued the work that you do Dave the work that you're doing here yep. um, putting people Here's on Dave. the reserve and getting Woo. people out here <laughs> actually making the building this business into fruition is just is incredible it is 360 to be here um, yep. today um, and yeah just thanks to the community team and all you do Green. Thank you thank so much you, for all of your work and, yeah. and moving this forward for all of us. It's been a true honor to be a part of it and to see, like I said, the way the way that the work that you guys have put in has paid off and for this community too. I love that, you know, this video series that we're doing is all about bringing different voices into the reserve and capturing those perspectives and, you know, showing how different stakeholders can come together around a common, a common dream and a common goal. And it's a beautiful thing. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone who joined us live. Oh, Dave. <laughs> All right, here's the outro, y'all. Here's a 360 view. Awesome. Woo! Sorry, I had to go a little reggae. <laughs> little reggae for your morning. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for tuning thank in. You. Great.